Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday, along the Alabama-Florida border, there was a magnitude 4.0 earthquake that USGS downgraded to a magnitude 3.8. 143 people so far have reported feeling this earthquake. A magnitude 4.0, which it was originally, is 100 times stronger than, say, a magnitude 2.0. The felt reports you can see here. Uh, we got Birmingham uh, all the way down by uh, New Orleans. They reported feeling it. And Tallahassee, it looks like. Using Google Earth, I put together um, all the historical earthquakes that I could find in this location. The largest being a magnitude 4.9 in 1997. And we'll zoom into that location. We got Robinsonville Road and Stanley Road. Let me go down here to this earthquake. This earthquake was not far, the 4.0 or 3.8, whichever you want to listen to, uh, was not far from the city of Pollard. Using the uh, Alabama Seismology website, I tracked all the earthquakes that have been occurring in this location, and it looks like there was a reactivation of possibly some fault lines, or it could be the movement of the South Georgia Rift System that started last year um, March of last year. The last time there was a large earthquake in this area was 23 years ago, and that was a magnitude 4.9. There was also um, a magnitude 3.0. Let me pull this out and turn off these roads so you can see this area better. Okay. I drew out the South Georgia Basin Rift System. This was formed um, when the uh, continents decided to uh, split apart, when this landmass separated from Africa, and the opening of the Atlantic Ocean formed. Down south, we got the movement of the Caribbean, which is also moving towards the north. And we also got plate tectonic movement um, over here by Charleston. Remember all the earthquakes that were happening along the border of uh, North Carolina and um, what Virginia was it? But this area of the recent earthquakes, nothing has been going on down there. Like I said, it something happened. Something triggered this swarm of earthquakes last year, which was in March, and then it stopped, and now we seem to be having another activation of earthquakes. This area probably is capable of having a magnitude 5 earthquake or greater. And I went through what I was able to acquire from the Geological Survey of Alabama. And these two areas, Pollard and Fulmington, there was absolutely nothing in this location on their website going back until 1886. Absolutely nothing listed. So all of a sudden, back in 1997, like I said, 23 years ago, there was a magnitude 4.9. And then nothing until last year, March. Here you can see March 11th, March 13th, March 13th, March 27th, March 27th. Then nothing until April 11th. There was a series of three earthquakes. Uh, March 12th, they had one or April, I should say, April 12th, they had one. And then on April 13th, they had one. Nothing until today, at least that they have listed on this um, document, this Excel document. The moment tensor ball for this 4.0 downgraded to a 3.8 show the first wave of the earthquake. 
came straight up. Uh, yeah, which is unusual. And then the fault line moved north and then slight, slightly west. You can see that there. Tension was applied going northeast. That might explain why there in South Carolina, near Columbia, there was one report from that location of feeling the earthquake. Using Google Earth, here's the location of that earthquake. I don't see any fracking going on, um, oil or gas um, extraction. I don't see that, but the ground rose up. Pressure came from down below, and the question is, why is that? Did it come from uh, the Gulf? Let me pull this out. Has pressure built up from the Gulf here? Coming from the Caribbean? Good question. Uh, more likely because pressure, it's an indication that there is pressure and there was all these earthquakes that started last year. Sometime in the near future, there could be some more earthquakes. Like I said, it's capable of having a magnitude five or greater. If there is a large earthquake, you have the chance of the ground turning to quicksand. It definitely would be felt over a wide area and you definitely would have a lot of damage. Another thought, something else to consider is large sinkholes forming. Rock slides, landslides, uh, damage to infrastructure, um, fault lines opening up, um, breaking up roads and oil and gas lines, fires. Everyone should be prepared for any type of disaster. Like right now, a lot of people aren't working and going through the pandemic. There's fires across the country, tornadoes, hurricanes, flooding, things like that. You should at least have a plan in place uh, where to meet up with loved ones, depending on the time of day that some disaster should strike. Say you're at work, say you're at school. Um, you're at the store shopping. The memorial um, holiday coming up, um, if you're out of state or um, out of town, where would you meet up with loved ones? So that's all I have for you about that. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments or questions, please put it down below. If you wish to support my work, I'm also on Patreon and on PayPal. And you can follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.